soft, delicious, not. No, it's really not very nice at all. Probably things like dried fruits and vegetables, much better, because you can make those into crisps, and that's a lot easier to do. It tastes like um, when you've had um, tortillas sort of the night before and you find a little bit left in the bowl the next morning and you eat it and it's a bit soft and a bit stale and a bit... So we won't make you any more of that, but... <laughs> But okay, and the last dish, very pretty. Very pretty. This, this hasn't taken a machine, has it, to make this? No, no, not at all. Um, this is an, uh, an Asian um, salad, and this one has got some lovely mushrooms in it as well, and some Japanese mushrooms. Yeah, I can tell you're really liking this style of food. <laughs> Again, lemon juice and lime. Um, it's got some nice onions in there, red peppers. Um, it's a really refreshing salad. It should make you actually feel really clean inside and refreshed, Revitalized. So, how have they done the noodles? Um, they are just—they're just literally um, kept in cold water and allowed to just soak in cold water for about 15 minutes. They're not really cooked. They're obviously. not cooked at all. That's no, the Beverly. Point. It is the point. You see, you're a mother of three. This is—isn't it just totally impractical? Sue. Okay, still to come, Angela Hartnett's roasted sea bream with black olives, the designer tableware to wow your dinner guests, and Ollie Smith cracks open the wine. My favourite bit. Now, do you eat the skin on fish? I eat the skin on fish. I come from a background of a <laughs> fish and chip shop, so we've been um, brought up to eat the fish, you know, the skin for sure. Mm. Nice. It's perfect. Good. I've got a... Now, when you see Sauvignon Blanc on a wine list, do you think it's a safe bet or a little bit unpredictable? Wine expert Ollie Smith, what's going on with Sauvignon Blanc? I think Sauvignon Blanc has suffered a little bit from its own success. In the 80s and 90s, massively popular. These days, people are drifting away a little bit, thinking, well, I want to try something different. I'm mm. going to go for a Chardonnay or a Riesling, richer, fruitier flavours. But I think that Sauvignon Blanc has got so much to offer. It's got lovely lemon, citric zest. It's a refreshing drink that has a wide variety of styles. And I've got three here that are going to appeal to uh, loads of different palettes. Brilliant. And, you th and, and Sauvignon Blanc can be divided into two quite distinct styles, depending on the climate where the grape has grown. That's exactly right, yeah. The old world style tends to be very kind of citric and tart, a lot of gooseberries, grapefruit. And the new world tends to be much more about tropical fruit. You get a lot more kind of sweet flavours of elderflower and passion fruit. And the bodies tend to be a little bit richer as well because they're a little bit warmer in the climate. OK. So the first one we have here, what's this? This is Erasmus Sauvignon Blanc 2004. It's 5 99 widely available. It's from Chile, which is one of my favourite areas, and you simply can't go wrong. On the nose, it's got lots of apple aromas. So this is one of the New World wines this is, this in, in is, the warmer climate. This is, well, Chile, it comes from a cooler area of Chile. And the reason I've chosen this oh. one is because it's a blend of the old and new world styles <laughs> so it's kind of got all the spritz that we like right. but it also has great fruit and for 5.99 I think it's terrific value okay. on the palette it's quite it's lovely it's apple and citrus I absolutely love this wine I particularly love it because Don Maximiano who actually founded Erasmus mm. was a man who grew the best beard and moustache in history and for that reason alone <laughs> I think it deserves praise well that is fabulous um, it, is this the kind of wine that um, would benefit from a bit of a bit of aeration, a bit of decanting? Absolutely, you should always decant wines. I decant both reds and whites, no matter how expensive or how much of a bargain it is. Yeah. It really sets those kind of bells and smells mm. free. And you don't need a fancy decanter; just bung it in a jug, bung it back in the bottle, and you're away. Okay. Fantastic. Moving on to the, the second one. Moving on to this one. This is your absolute classic old world Sauvignon Blanc. It's Sancerre. It comes from the north of France in the Loire, and it's all about high acidity. It's got a lot of citric, gooseberry, kind of grapefruit flavours going on, a bit of minerality in there. It comes mm. from very chalky soil uh, with uh, some clay as well that runs, in fact, all the way to Dorset, but I won't bore you with the technicalities <laughs> of it. Um, but it's absolutely terrifically kind of zesty and minerally very much tarter than the one we had previously. Much, much tarter, yeah. Mm. Would you, what would you have that with? What would you eat? What would you this one with? here goes terrifically well with fish. It goes really well with shellfish. Fish, and in yeah. fact, I've had it with minted peas. And this is the Sancerre Vieille Vines 2004 from Paul Cherrier, and it's 9.99 at Majestic. Mm. And for that, again, I just think terrific value. Would you spend £10 on a bottle of wine to eat with minted peas? I would, actually. I love peas, for a start, but I love <laughs> wine even more, you see. But the thing about this one, it comes from Vieille Vine, and all that means is old vines. Right. And if you ever see that on a label, that just means that the, the flavour is going to be more concentrated, because mm. the older the vine, the less the fruit, the more concentrated the flavour. So this one is a great example. If you enjoy a grapefruit, your kind of citric stuff, yeah. go for that. Very citricky. OK, moving on. This, this one is noticeably uh, darker in colour, isn't it? It is. Deep yellow. This is a stonker. This is quite simply... I call this my Elvis Presley of the Sauvignon Blanc world. This is the king of Sauvignon Blanc. Now, what's wonderful about this one is it has a very rich body. 
and it has serious development potential. Most Sauvignon Blanc is made to be drunk young, but yeah. this stuff, they import barrels from Burgundy, so you get a sort of toasty flavor there, vanilla oh, yeah. flavor, and the state-of-the-art winery has been designed so that they just use gravity to move the wine around the winery. There's no pressing, there's no kind of muscling the wine around, so it has a very elegant feel to Lovely. it. Lovely. It's gorgeous. It smells wonderful. Every grape is hand-picked as well. I'm pricier, so excited about pricier it. Pricier than these the, two. It's 17.99, and it's the Amina Barrel Fermented Sauvignon Blanc 2004. But the reason it's expensive is because every single grape is hand-picked in the vineyard and examined, and then again in the winery before they even crush it. Oh, and stop start. it. No, it's true. They really do. And, and then they make this fantastic, opulent wine, which I I'm talking far too much about it. Smells enjoy. okay. It does smell okay. Lots of vanilla there. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it's it? It's so opulent in the mouth. It's when we talk about body very and wine. Very full bodied. It is very full bodied. It's got. It's the difference between a glass of water and a glass of olive oil. Yeah. And this is very much your kind of your olive oil and your opulence. And this goes terrifically well with lobster. Should you mm. ever need to know, it's often a difficult one to find a match for. This rocks. I think it's worth every penny of it. Seventeen ninety nine. Ollie, that is delicious. Mm. Um, I have to say, I think I could probably drink more of the first one. I think that's fair because it's light bodied, it's a bit less alcohol actually. This one here is a stonking ah, right. 14%, and that one there is, I think, about 13. Okay. Which is perfect for kind of your yeah. session enjoyment, yeah. <laughs> shall we say. Uh, but that one actually is a, it's a beautiful wine. It's going to appeal to a wide variety of palettes. Lovely. That's brilliant. Thanks, Ollie. You're welcome. Okay, coming up, we help you bring elegance to your dining table, and Angela gets fruity in the kitchen. Stay right there. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. Thanks, Emily. Thank you. Thank you. Right, OK, we are continuing our quest to find out what goes on in the mind of a top chef. To OK, it's time for pudding. Over to you, Angela. Thank you. So now I'm going to take this to Beverly and see what she thinks of this one. Angela, bring it over. The red wine that you used in there, does it, does it have go. to be any particular quality? Um, I think if you use a reasonable quality, you know, something like £5 a bottle, I think you need yeah. that because otherwise it could leave that sort of bitter vinegary taste. Mm. Oh, I'm having a bit of trouble with these slippery little suckers. What, um, and, and in terms of using a particular red wine to cook with, I think you can one? use sort of a Cabignon Sauvignon, a Barolo, a Chianti, something like that. You know, rather a dry red wine. It's quite boozy, isn't it? It's is quite boozy. You can see why I call it, you know, <laughs> pick me up, you know. I feel sort of picked up already. Six, actually, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's delicious, Angela. Thank Good. you so much. It's been a real pleasure having you here today. Good, Thank glad you. you enjoyed it. Okay, if you want any of the recipes in today's show, go to our website, skyone.co.uk forward slash taste or to Sky Text page 710. That's it for today. Please join us next time because remember, good food would be nothing without taste.